First, thank you for your presentation. Um, so going back to the consequence function, or as you call it, consequence yeah. model, <laughs> I was wondering, like, I saw the percentages, like, do you, it's like something that you apply to all the all the buildings, or it's different for masonry or like most concrete? Good question. So, yeah, that. Because fragility functions are for each different kind of building, and then... Yeah, so Currently, um, so we haven't done a lot of research into this part of the, of the model, and so as I mentioned, we're using the model that Jen has proposed. But this model it does not vary per building class, so it is uh, the same. But I do agree that we should look at whether these ratios, this percentage of repair to replacement, could be very different. Uh, and also, it could depend on what you need to replace the building with, because in some countries you have um, requirements to replace, maybe an unreinforced masonry building has to be replaced with a seismically designed uh, reinforced masonry and so it would cost more. So yeah, I think uh, this is an area where more research is needed and do these ratios vary as a function of the building class, the steel is different from masonry and so on. But I know Vita wants to correct me, but I understand that currently we're just using values that are the same for all building classes. Okay, thank you very much. But sorry, just a, but one thing, as I mentioned, one thing we do do is we try and check that at least that the losses that come out, the vulnerability model that comes out, gives reasonable losses as compared with past recent events. So, but yeah, we could be, we could be balancing wrong uh, building classes but getting the right value. Thank you once again for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, regarding the second application, is 30 uh, this kind of geology, uh, geology data, is it uniform for all the countries and how, how is it gathered? Is it uh, deep geology data? Is it some kind of, uh, is it uh, for all the countries? Is it, uh, does it first from country to, to country or how, how is it collected? Okay, so this is not something that I am very familiar with this part of the work, so I don't work in the geotechnical engineering, but there is a, uh, a document that I can share with you that describes in detail how these maps have been put together. But I think one thing that does vary is the resolution from country to country. So there's not the same uh, resolution of the um, geological maps. But, um, um, is it basic geological map? It's the, yeah, it's the, it's, the, it's the available, publicly available geological maps, but surely in some countries there are better, uh, higher resolution maps that, that they're not publicly available through these, that, that were not collected within these projects. So, again, another area that could continue to be improved. Official map, like the seismological map, uh, like, like hazard map, is it official geological uh, map from each country or yeah. some? I don't know exactly what, what, what has been put into the one journal, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but we can really check that. It, it would be whatever is publicly available. But yes, an official, I believe it would be the official national. Um, thank you. Uh, other questions? Oh. Uh, do you know maybe uh, what's the calculation time for uh, scenario? <coughs> If you want, uh, if you have uh, input uh, shape map, yes. and uh, you use open quake engine, what is the calculation time for obtaining result? And can it be used for the purpose of uh, a, ra a rapid uh, risk assessment? Okay, so the time it's it's fast. Second, thirty seconds. Uh, it would depend on the size of the event how detailed your exposure model is. Um, are you calculating building by building or is it a grid? But it, it's seconds, maybe minutes at most. But yes, the idea is that it could be used for a rapid loss assessment in the future. So we're working with, um, if there is an extension to the CERA project, which we hope in the CERA, the next phase of CERA, there will be a work package looking at using this European seismic risk model for rapid loss assessment after earthquakes. So um, there's an activity to standardize shape maps at the European scale, and then once they are available, you can readily calculate the, the damage and the losses using all of the models that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
And currently, can this uh, process be automatized? For instance, if we have automatic yes. uh, event detection, can can it be uh, can this routine be uh, automatically yes. started? Yes, I believe so. Maybe Vito is better uh, has more insight into that, but I think it's already being done in a, in a project called Aristotle, a European project. They have. Automate, they, you can trigger the, the, the software from uh, the fact that an event has occurred. In the United States as well, ah. so the, the shape map, the shape maps, the, the <coughs> USGS, it uses OpenFake. Uh, so the, it uses all the GFPs which are being implemented there, it's, it's OpenFake. And in, uh, for the case of Portugal, uh, the, the University of Porto actually developed an automatic system. So if something happens and if the magnitude is above the <coughs> pressure, we just grab right away open quick the different data sets, it calculates things and it takes like a minute or two minutes to give you like a map with the different losses.